Hi booktube, welcome back to another video. This time I'm going to be talking to you about the books that I read during the month of March. Uh, March was a bit of a mixed month as uh, the rest of the world knows. The world has basically gone into lockdown due to the coronavirus and uh, this did affect my reading for the month. I still read a good amount of books, I still managed to read um, seven or eight books but I did have to, uh, towards the end of the month, make myself sit down to read and I was finding it a struggle just to, to pick up a book and I had to make myself do it. So I did go away from my TBR that I'd set for myself and I did just read books that I wanted to read um, and that I felt could actually get me out of the slump that I seemed to be in. Also during the month of March I went away for the weekend on a reading retreat that was organised by Jess McGlynn. Um, her channel is Jess McGlynn. She organises these in conjunction with a bed and breakfast in the Yorkshire Dales or on the edge of the Yorkshire Dales which is in a beautiful location, very pretty location. Uh, I'll try and um, insert some photos for you. And it's absolutely lovely. We go up there on a Friday and we come back on a Sunday. And on the Saturday morning we went for a walk around the village and we went into the local bookshop there and I did pick up some books because I'm quite naughty like that. And it was just overall, it was just a really lovely, relaxed setting to sit and read. This also did have a bit of an impact because before I went up to the retreat, I was trying not to get too involved with books because there were certain books I wanted to take with me and the books that I wanted to take with me were the books that I wanted to read before I went. So um, I did. My, I had a pretty slow start to the month as well. It was actually a really lovely weekend. And uh, if you're in the UK, she's got one organised at the moment for October. Obviously, all being well, that it can go ahead then. This year, she decided to run two. So we had one in March and she's doing one in October. Hopefully, she'll be doing the same again next year. She set up an Instagram page and a Facebook page for it and she's actually called it Sparrow Retreats. So they're female only, um, but yes, if you're watching this and you're in the UK, go and check it out, highly recommend it. It was just a lovely, lovely weekend uh, with a group of like-minded people uh, to, from my home to the actual bed and breakfast. So I thought what better way to, to, to do that than to actually kickstart the weekend and listen to an audiobook. So I picked up A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. I managed to read about 350 pages in total in the 10 hours that I was listening to it. Uh, so that was really good because I'd really been struggling with that one to, to get going with it. I, I think probably because the book opens with an introduction of new characters instead of picking up where the last one left off. Um, I think it just it, it confused me and I just couldn't couldn't get into it. So but actually being forced to listen to it all the way there and all the way back, I think that really, really helped um, because it just meant I pushed through that and I'm now into the story proper and I know what's going on. Um, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to pick up some more of that soon. The other book that I had ongoing and um, at the start of the month and wanted to make some progress with was The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. Uh, I'd only read about 50 pages when I went into March um, and I said I wanted to read about 100 pages, 50 to 100 pages more. I've actually done really, really well uh, because I've had this as my taking to book work, taking to work book as well. Uh, so I could get a few pages read every single day. And I've just tried to, in between books, just tried to pick it up and read a few pages. And I've actually managed to read about 400 pages of it in March. So I've only got a couple of hundred pages left to finish this one off. Uh, the hunt for the horn is going well. Uh, they've found it and lost it again. Um, so we're obviously still going on with that. Uh, I can't remember how it ends. So I'm, I'm, I am itching a little bit to finish this one. I do keep thinking about it. Um, but yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to read so much of this one in March now. Uh, um, in April rather, because I've got quite, I've got, uh, TBR already set because I'm just doing readathons and read-alongs in April. And I did actually start a book and not finish it in April. And that book is Why Mummy Drinks by Jill Sims. 
Um, some of you may recognise this book. Jill Sims actually runs a Facebook page called Peter and Jane. And on there she would update with funny anecdotes from daily life as a mummy, a working mummy. Um, and they just they were quite hilarious. I would read them and although I'm not a mummy myself, um, I would read them and I would be able to see parallels between my childhood and what what she'd put up. So when she wrote a book, originally I really wanted to read it um, and I put it off and put it off and never actually picked it up. But then a friend at work um, was actually reading it and I'd said how much I wanted to read it and she offered to lend it to me. So at the moment it's in my possession. I will get it back to her, I promise. Um, but yes, I started this when I got back from the reading retreat uh, because I didn't really want to pick up anything else that I'd been reading. Um, and I got, I've gotten quite a way into it, so I've only got that much left to go. Uh, it's quite easy to read, funny in parts. Um, it's quite serious. It's not as funny as the page, uh, Facebook page, but there are still some humorous moments in it. And I'm looking forward to finishing this one again. It's probably going to go on the back burner for most of April, depending on how quickly I get through the books that I've already set for April. So now on to the books that I actually finished in March. And at the end of February, I was actually in the middle of a book. And that book was Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I did immediately carry on reading this in the at the beginning of March. And... I don't know what more I can say about these books. I absolutely love the Harry Potter world. I'm a bit of a nerd, can you tell? Um, and yeah, I'm just... I love reading these books whenever I pick them up. And I, it's a solid five stars. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is about the sixth year at Hogwarts um, for Harry. And... This is the year where things are really starting to come together. Um, I've heard this referred to as a filler book. To me, it isn't. Um, to me, it does further the plot because Harry is learning a bit more about what he's got to do to defeat uh, Voldemort and his followers. Uh, although, obviously, the ultimate realisation doesn't come until the last book. But in this one, he's really starting to figure out what's going on. At the beginning of this book, obviously, he's got obviously after effects of the devastating end to book five. And this does obviously mean that Harry's not quite so. He, he's not in a good place at the start of this book. He's actually really unhappy. Um, he's really. I think he's scared. He's worried. He's um, he's angry at the world. He takes it out on his friends. He takes it out on the people around him. And. To be honest, I find him not quite so likeable in this book. Um, he also becomes a bit of a bully, trying out new spells on people that he knows can't defend themselves. And I don't like him for that. Um, really, the only times I really like him is when he's with Dumbledore and he's trying to obviously figure out what's going on. And also, in I, I quite like him when he's in potions lessons as well. Um, I like seeing Hermione get the better. Uh, be got the better of a little bit <laughs> even though I kind of like Hermione a lot um but yes yeah, so I really enjoyed it I gave it five stars like I give all of the Harry Potter books um and yeah I am itching to get on with the Deathly Hallows it probably is going to be my first read for April um so that I had a really solid start to March with my reading um and then after this it all went down the next book that I read in March was actually the first one that I finished while I was on the reading retreat and that book is Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Claypass. This is an historical romance novel set in the Regency period of England. The story is about Devon um, who has recently inherited an earldom because his cousin has passed away and he was next in line after his cousin because his cousin had had no children. And it's also the story of the cousin's widow, Kathleen. Uh, the story starts out with Devon inspecting the new country estate that he's inherited, which is in quite a dilapidated state of repair. Uh, it needs a lot of work doing to it to make it habitable. Um, and also the estate's finances are in a bit of a pickle and need sorting out as well. Also, the inspection includes Devon making a less than favourable impression on Kathleen. 
and she storms off and isn't really happy and is then becomes resistant to the changes that he wants to make to make life a better place on the estate itself. <clears throat> the story then goes on from there and obviously is showing how they um, then learn about each other and learn. And Kathleen obviously learns about the changes he wants to make. Devon learns about the reasons why she's so resistant to these changes and how they then start to compromise and come together, start to like each other, start to fall in love with each other. This is the first book I've read by Lisa Claypass and I very, very much doubt it will be the last. In fact, I've actually got the next book in the series already lined up to read. I really enjoyed her writing. I really liked how she showed the push and pull. I did feel there could have been a bit more show of them falling in love rather than tell. Uh, and for this reason, I've knocked off a star and I've only given this one four stars. The third book that I finished in March was Ull by M.K. Eden. This is, in my case anyway, the long-awaited seventh instalment in her Tornians series, which is a series of sci-fi romance novels, uh, which have primarily been set in space. But this one is actually come back to Earth, and it's the story of Ull, who's been having quite a hard time um, in this series. He was initially rejected in the first book, and he took it really, really hard. He's also a male who is very set in his ways and he's very resistant to change and with the interactions that they're now hoping to have with Earth there is a lot of changes coming for his uh, race, for his way of life uh, because the way they've treated women in the past, Earth women just won't stand for that and they like a lot more freedoms and the Tornian men feel like they've actually, the way they live their life is to keep their women safe but the earth women challenge that and say well actually all you're doing is just keeping them confined and you're not giving them any freedom. Ull is quite a conflicted character, he's being heavily influenced by more than just his own personality uh, but we're hoping that in this book he actually gets his redemption and he actually does defeat this dark side that is uh, is affecting how he views the world and women in general. Ull is travelling to Earth to try and negotiate a treaty between Earth and Tornian to obviously share resources. The Tornians can protect Earth. There is another race, uh, the Khaleesians, who are abducting Earth women and are treating them pretty, pretty poorly. Uh, it's quite horrendous what they put the women through. So Tornian are offering to protect Earth from the Khaleesians and make sure that no more women are abducted. But in return, they'd like to be able to interact with Earth women and also um, maybe terms mate with them but obviously in our terms obviously fall in love get married all of those all of those things. Ull has been tasked with contacting an earth female Trisha Burke. She is the best friend of a character from one of the previous books in fact from the first book Grimm in the series and she uh, is quite a strong character. She's quite a match for Ull and his temperament and I really really enjoyed seeing them learn about each other because all gets off on the wrong foot with her he does entirely the wrong thing to start with and um but trish is quite although she's quite headstrong she's also quite patient and she does actually spend time talking to all and trying to understand all and also trying to demonstrate to all why some of the things in in his culture she doesn't agree with and how it would be better from her point of view um and she's also quite good at getting all to finally listen to her and see reason. So it's, it was really good watching them come together and talk. There was, there was lots of show in this book and you could really see them coming around to each other, coming around to each other's way, way of life and the changes that they would both need to adapt to. Unfortunately, there is a point of conflict because the roles that they would now both be playing in the treaty would mean that Trisha would need to stay on Earth and all would need to return to Tornian. And he, that does cause a bit of friction for them. Um, and neither of them can see a way around it until things obviously happen, which change both their outlook. And they have to find a way to make it work. And they do find a way to make it work. 
really enjoyed it um i would i would recommend this series they're not too long they're not too heavy um they are really really great the next book that i finished in march um by the point i got to this one i was really starting to have to force myself to pick up a book and i picked this one up thinking it would be a, a quick read that would get me back into reading um but unfortunately i don't think it really quite worked out that way and this book was belonging to the dragon by cara lockhart Although I read the first book in this series um, in February, I really didn't remember much about the side characters that were in that book. In fact, I couldn't even tell you the names of the main characters in the first book. Uh, but this, in this book, we're picking up with a couple called Lucas and Lana. Lucas is a very important dragon in the Dragon Shifter world. Uh, he's actually some kind of prince. And Lana was the daughter of the housekeeper who used to work for Lucas's mother. Uh, there's some kind of, there's been a bit of friction about them in, between them in the past. Something happened, which meant that they haven't spoken for about 13 years. In recent times, it was following the death of Lana's mother. And again, something happened. And then, um, obviously, they went their separate ways and they just haven't been in contact since. Lana has also had something happen to her, which means she now sees herself as a monster rather than someone good, or even though she's trying to do something good. She's actually trying to find her best friend who's been kidnapped, um, and she's using these new powers that she's got to try and do that. Lucas uh, comes upon her while she's doing that, and he's trying to eradicate um, an, a, a source of evil which is also linked up to Lana's friend's disappearance. Lucas pretty much forces Lana into a car with him and I'm not really... And from there, um, there's a sex scene that happens in the car while the car is driving and I'm kind of like, this really isn't realistic. Um, and although I know, it, I know it's paranormal romance fiction, um, but there are certain levels of realism that I like to have in these types of books and having sex in a car that's driving itself really doesn't do it for me at all. Uh, I, I really did think that was a bit too unbelievable, even for paranormal romance. I didn't really find this book that memorable. Um, I've given it three stars, but I've given it three stars because the plot line that's running from book one to book two and will be running into book three is actually not that bad. It's actually quite good. Uh, so that part of it I enjoyed, but I think I probably could have done with this book being more about that rather than about the romance between Lana and Lucas, which felt forced and not very natural at all. It didn't, I didn't get them as a couple. I didn't feel them as a couple and, um, it, this wasn't a great, uh, continuation for me. Uh, I thought it would be a good one to get me back reading, but unfortunately it really The wasn't. next book that I picked up to read in March was one that I knew would satisfy all my reading needs um, because I knew it would be fast, I knew it would be fun, I knew I would like the writing style, and that is because it was Quidditch Through the Ages by J.K. Rowling. This is um, a history of Quidditch, how its origins and how it came into the modern game that the Wizarding World knows now. Uh, it's really good, you, um, you get lots of history on it, how the balls evolved over the years and how the rules have evolved over the years, talk about the Quidditch World Cup. Um, it also details all the um, teams that are in the Wizarding World uh, which is a bit like football so it really really I really really enjoyed this um, it took me less than an hour to read it and I actually sat down and read it in um, before going to bed one evening because I just needed to read but I needed to read something that I knew wasn't gonna um, take time that I knew I was going to enjoy so I really really loved this one and I've got the other two books I've got the actual whole Hogwarts library box set um, which has got uh, the Tales of Beedle the Bard and also Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Um, so if I get a bit stuck during April, I'm probably going to pick up those two as well to read them. But yes, really, really thoroughly enjoyed that and it did give me a bit of a taste for reading again. 
um, and actually spurred me on to read a little bit more during the month of during the last week or two of March. The next book that I picked up and read in March was Southern Charmer by Jessica Peterson. This is the first book in her Charleston Heat series and this book follows the story of Olivia and Eli. Olivia is traveling to Charleston from New York to get away from her life there. Her boyfriend there in New York had proposed to her and she had found that she just could not say yes. She's pretty unhappy with her life the way it is. She has the picture perfect life. She has a career. She has the perfect boyfriend. She has the perfect house. But she's really not happy. There's something missing. And what she really wants to do is to try and write a novel. A romance novel to be precise. So she's travelling to Charleston. She's agreed with her boyfriend that they will take a break. So that she can travel to Charleston uh, to stay in a friend's house and try and write her book and then at the end of the month she'd return and pick up where she left off. Eli is a chef who owns his own restaurant. He has two restaurants and one of those is doing fantastically well and the other one is a fairly new restaurant that unfortunately is failing. The house where Olivia is going to stay is actually right next door to Eli's house. On the first morning there um, she smells what Eli's cooking for breakfast uh, she hears a bit of um, arguing going on because of a visitor at Eli's house so she pops around to see what's going on drawn by the smell of cooking bacon and obviously by the sounds of people arguing just to make sure everything's okay while there um, Eli and Olivia take a liking to each other uh, it turns out that there's not really much going on. Eli's just having a bit of a disagreement with a friend and um, Eli invites Olivia to stay to breakfast because he thinks she needs a bit of feeding up. He thinks she looks too thin, um, which is, you know, quite refreshing in books. Usually it's the other way around. Um, but she she stays and they get talking and Olivia tells Eli that she's trying, she's in Charleston, she's trying to write a book. She's a romance author. And Eli offers to help her with it. Not that he's read much romance, um, but he offers to read through her chapters and give her feedback. And they their friendship starts to grow from there. This is very much a friends to lovers romance. And it was quite sweet to follow. Um, Olivia, being on a break from her boyfriend, is obviously very cautious of getting involved. She's She's very attracted to Eli. And although Eli is trying to take their friendship uh, further and become more than friends Olivia is actually really resistant to that and she they do come together they do spend the night together and following this Olivia does actually decide that she needs to break it off with her boyfriend and she does all of this so there is actually no cheating um at all uh they do she does make the right decisions at the right time so I just want to reassure anybody watching who maybe doesn't like cheating in books that there is no cheating um everything is done in the right order olivia makes a decision makes the phone calls beforehand and it's really sweet to watch them become friends and fall in love and i was really really enjoying that and then it came time for olivia to go back and something happens which to me felt forced um it was a point of conflict that i thought maybe if it was going to come up it should have come come up a lot earlier in their relationship but then when olivia olivia actually tells eli why she's in charleston eventually she comes clean and explains about her boyfriend and this is all before anything really happens between them too much and then something happens a bit later on which then causes a point of conflict which for me felt forced it should have come much earlier if it was going to happen uh, by the time it happens, they're very settled together and very happy. And I just, I didn't get it. It didn't ring true for me. And I, for that reason, I've actually knocked this down to a three star book. I did enjoy the writing style. Like I say, there was a lot of show um, of them coming together and falling in love. And I, I really enjoyed that. However, it just fell short on execution for me. Um, I have... I am going to read Southern Player, which is the next book in the series. Uh, I've got them all from Kindle Unlimited, so it's not like I've I've paid out for them. But um, I'm going to give Southern Player a go. I've got it set as one of the books I'm going to read for uh, the Magical Readathon. 
this year, uh, this April. <clears throat> so I am going to pick that one up and read it and see how I get on. And maybe if I get on with that one, maybe I will continue and finish the series. Um, but at the moment, it's very dependent on how the second book goes. The next book I read in March is Immortal in Death by J.D. Robb. This is the third book in J.D. Robb's In Death series and it's the uh, next book that I had to read for the In Death Read Along which is being run on Instagram. Uh, just look for the handle In Death Read Along. The aim is to read one of the In Death books a month, every month, uh, for, the re for the rest of 2020. So this was the third book and that I had to read. This book picks up from the end of the second book. Eve and Rourke have agreed to get married and they're planning their marriage and it's going to be happening in a, in a, just a few short weeks. And obviously this does, it does unnerve Eve a little. Um, she's, she's not used to all this emotion and love, but she is starting to settle into it and she's starting to settle into her relationship with Rourke and Rourke starting to learn even more not to get frustrated with Eve when she's resistant to the, the the good things about being in love with someone um so it's it's a great continuation from that and i really enjoyed that part of the story but as always unfortunately murders get in the way eve is a homicide detective with the new york police department and she has um she gets called to the home of her best friend's boyfriend by her best friend because her best friend has found a body Unfortunately, this also means that her best friend is implicated in the murder, but Eve knows that there is absolutely no way that her friend could have committed the murder at all and she is completely innocent. So Eve is then, while she's then obviously trying to find the killer, she's also doubly um, committed to finding the killer because she wants to clear her best friend's name. And there are other murders that then happen, which seemingly don't appear to be connected. Um, but as Eve delves more and more into the case cases, she finds connections between them. And she also has to liaise with other police departments in this book as well, which also causes a bit of tension because she wants to maintain control. She's the primary detective on this case and she needs to maintain control. But the other detectives also want to get a bit of the control as well. Uh, they're not very good at cooperating with each other and this book kept me guessing um the previous two books i think i said before in the previous two books i actually figured out more than you know less than halfway through the book who the actual murderer was in this book i didn't know who the murderer was until the author chose to reveal it there were more players in this book it felt a bit more developed um the the murder start the murder and the evidence that eve has to sift through and there was at least three people other than Mavis that could have committed the murder. And I couldn't figure it out. I really, I really, really enjoyed it. And that really did keep me reading. I really do like a good murder mystery. And this ticked all the boxes for me. Uh, I gave it four stars. Um, again, there's uh, J.D. Robb, it feels like she's developing her writing style. This book is more than 20 years old. Uh, I found in the first couple of books the transitions between different points of view was quite jarring. It wasn't very clear sometimes and I had to go back and reread passages to work out who was actually talking. And in this book I didn't find that quite so much. I felt it was more defined as to whose point of view, whose head we were in. There were a couple of times where that happened but I did actually find that I got on much better with this book and I'm really, really looking forward to picking up Rapture in Death and continuing Even Rourke's relationship and also um, trying to figure out a new set of murders. And I think that's going to be a very early read in April. So by this point, I'd actually gotten into a bit of a reading stride. Um, I was getting towards the end of the month um, and I actually managed to read two books in two days, which I was really, really pleased with. The first of those books was Awakened by Demoness by Felicity Heaton. I gave this book a three stars and I did actually really enjoy it, um, but not as much as maybe other works that I've done. Uh, this is the 10th book in her series of Fated Mates. So you know that the two main characters are going to be getting together by the end of the story 
and that they are going to have a hopefully happily ever after uh, the series is a series of standalones there aren't many themes running through them that would run from one to another a couple of the previous books are connected um, but this one not so much it's more outside of the world whether it will come into the the uh, world a bit later on uh, I've yet to to see uh, but this book is about Asteria who is a demoness from hell and Ray an angel from heaven both um, Asteria and Ray have been sent to search out for a dangerous half-breed who needs to either be turned to the side of hell or heaven and they've been tasked with this obviously Ray being an angel um, he's not supposed to have needs and wants like any other human but that all changes when he comes across Asteria when they're both so they mean uh, <clears throat> when they come across each other in the first place that they are starting to look for the half breed and he she he knows there's something different about her to start with because he doesn't trip all his senses uh, like other demons do and he doesn't feel this overwhelming desire to destroy her like he would any other demon also for Asteria she knows that there is something more going on she's quite attracted to Ray and she also um, doesn't feel the desire to fight and kill him as she would any other normal angel either uh, she realizes quite quickly that they are fated mates and she does all that she can to try and seduce Ray but it's not until they actually find the half-breed and there are some pretty big revelations that turn their entire lives upside down that make them realize that actually they are supposed to be together um, I thoroughly enjoyed this book it is only three stars but that's just because it's short it's not very well um, the, the world is quite well developed but there's not a lot of it and you're very very contained to the couple and not really anything else happens outside of the couple uh, so like I say I don't know if any more is going to happen um, between them whether they're going to feed into other stories that have happened that are going to happen uh, but I do own the rest of the series I do like Felicity Heaton's writing I think she ties things up very well and I'm looking forward to, to moving on to the next book in the series the last book that I read in March is Blade Song by JC Daniels and this book I have given it a three stars I enjoyed the plot um, but not the romance um, <clears throat> this is about a private investigator Kit Kobalna uh, who is some sort of she's an Aneri I think um, I only finished it yesterday and I can't remember already what she is uh, but she has some forms of magic and she's a magical assassin but she's chosen to live as a private investigator and she is approached by a cat shifter called Damon to find a missing teenager from his clan uh, from the start they don't like each other they get off on the wrong foot uh, they're really frustrated and annoyed with each other Kit really doesn't like um, Damon at all and it's not until halfway through the book that the actual romance starts unfortunately though it does feel like Kit has completely changed her personality because she she really doesn't like Damon at all and there's no hint usually with um, enemies to lovers hate to love romances there is some kind of you can see through the the hate through the fear that there is actually something more than just that and that they are they there is more to the feelings but with Kit I didn't get that sense at all um she didn't like Damon so why on earth would she then turn around and, and you know things happen between them it didn't it that didn't work out for me but the whole plot line of the teenager going missing and the investigation and what happens when they actually find the teenager and things that happen after that I really did enjoy and I did think this was quite a well-developed world already uh, so you've got the cat shifters you've got the wolf shifters you've got witches you've got demons you've got vampires and I really did enjoy that part of it which is why I actually gave this a three stars um I haven't decided whether to carry on with the series or not at the moment I'm 
leaning towards trying another book just to see how I go because I think the next book obviously um Kit and Damon are a couple and it is more investigations from Kit's point of view so that part of it is already established um so it, there might just be more um investigations with an undercurrent of them being their romance a bit like the in death series uh, by JD Robb so I'm thinking I might give them give the second one a go and see where I go from there. So that was all the books I read in March. I actually had a pretty good reading month. Like I say, I managed to get through about eight books and I enjoyed them all. There wasn't anything less than a three stars. And hopefully that's got me on a good footing for April. I've pretty much decided which are the two books I'm going to start with in April. Um, so hopefully I can keep the the flow that i've had in the last couple of days i like i say i think i read i read definitely read two books in two days i think i read three books in four days so i'm really really hoping that i can continue that role now while we're on um lockdown and get uh, quite a few more books read um like i say the books that i had on the go that i've already started i'm not going to make an effort to read them this month unless i'm kind of feeling like i need a break from the readathons uh but yes, my main focus for April is the readathons, and I will be back in a month to tell you how I got on with all of those. So I hope you're all well. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope that you're finding plenty to keep you occupied um, in these uncertain times. I hope you're all managing to stay in contact with friends, family, and I hope to see you all again in a month's time. Bye.